Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Dory Double One. I choose you. Written by Press Pauls to join. Why do you keep yelling that? Etherex clicked from a perch. Twin pairs of wings buzzing with an annoyance that I couldn't help but smirk at. Don't worry about it. Gritting my teeth. I did my part of our duo and reattached down the last of the restraints. It's a human thing. Really me, human. A very naughty space lizard hissed down at me, thrashing, unfortunately, five free tail that I probably should have strapped down to. Release me at once. Ah, see, uh, we tried the nice way once. Then you escaped from those very nice police officers and crashed their car into a school. Now you get the express route. I laughed, typing in the code for our nearest branch office and blowing the prisoner's transport sled a kiss as it blasted off again. It even had a twinkle, plasma pulse jets glittering as it disappeared into the night. That isn't an answer, Hitherix chittered, fluttering up and hovering in front of my face. I looked it up, you know. Nothing on the extra net explains it. Yeah, I chuckled, offering my forearm once as I was done feeding the stalgic. It's pretty old, the human thing. Well, explain it. I am trying to figure out how. Really? I was racking my brain. How did you explain it? X-ray 113. My radio chirped, interrupting a conversation I didn't want to have for the first place. Are you 1098? 104, I answered, offering a thrax the least smug shrug that I could manage, content that I dodged it another time. Got something for us. Possible 1066 on 31 and Hakar. RP is across the street in the El Sishi Delhi. States they're witnessing a hotel x-ray dealing a scalar and blitz in the alleyway. The tired voice of my tired and true dispatcher sighed, probably exhausted from a fifth 16-hour shift in a row. Xeno hours were a hot crock of, uh, oh, we can get there fast, I know a shortcut, my partner chirped happily wiggling her needles for hands happily before she started to point down nearby anyway. Apparently, forgetting about her integration entirely at the thought of yet another battle. She just had to be a bee drill. I was allergic to bees. X-ray 113 is 1049, nodding to Itherax. I led her hand of the directions, her hypersensitive antennae leading us down a confusing maze of side alleys and busy sidewalks. I could have sworn took twice as long as the direct route, though I just gave Itherax more of a chance to complain. Apparently the Hexani's scent was as potent as it was unpleasant. Itherax flittering her wings with annoyance, and then uttered disgust with the closer we got. Thankfully the chemical smelled like roses to my nose, which was fitting seeing that the Hexani looked like an awful lot like a Ishtaka, a flowery voice cursed. The drug dealing Resilia. Sorry, Hexani in question, spotting us the second we rounded the corner. It's the cops. Why do they always have to scatter just to make things harder? But at least I had a secret weapon ready so our main perp wouldn't get away. Itherax, I choose you! What does that? Itherax started to complain just as I wound up with my throwing arm. Four years of varsity training me well as an XE-9 unit, but all I had to do was get her going in the right direction anyways. Itherax ganding onto her targets like a little heat-seeking missile once she was thrown. Me! Bullseye! I yelled excitedly. Itherax's twin needle hitting its mark spot on. The Hexani, on the other hand, never had a chance. The surprising legal poison super effective as she fainted on the spot. Which meant, now came the fun part. Wrangling her partners before they had a chance to get away. I always loved Team Rocket episodes. Jenny, I swear on my brood, Nate, if you don't explain that, then we're done. End of story. Story number two. Maintenance reports written by Chain Blue. Administrator Snurt of the Mercator Trade Station LF-0017 watched as Maintenance Chief William J. Bill Cable 
unceremoniously sat down in an uncomfortable chair in the administrator's ostentatious office. Administrator Snut could have easily had a comfortable chair installed, but chose not to. One's subordinates should never get too comfortable around their superior, after all. The human was dressed in his customary, slovenly, lubricated, stained technician's coveralls. The maintenance chief insisted that everyone refer to him as Bill, even though the word was phonically identical to a frayed, borderline obscene turn for a comically oversized Mercador male reproductive organ. Snurt got around this by referring to him as Chief. Chief, I called you here today to clear up some discrepancies in some maintenance reports, I explained Administrator Snurt. I've sent the documents in question to your pad, Snurt said. The chief nodded and tapped a few times on his pad. Ready when you are, sir, said Bill stoically. Item one, said Administrator Snurt. The means are repaired to the high band data antenna is listed as percussive maintenance. Can you explain that? Bill deadpanned. Technician Smoot went out to fix and repair pod and accidentally ran into the antenna, and it started working again. Snut twitched. I, um, see, Snut said. On to item two then, said Snut. Maintenance pod Zeta OBDI system sent a report that the thrusters were offline during the flight, and the log says that it was addressed by rapid power cycling. That was Smoot again, said Bull. When he bounced off the antenna, the thrusters were sent into safe mode and shut down. So he popped open an access panel on the controls and rapidly connected and disconnected main power a few times. That tricked the computer into thinking that it'd been through enough self-checks to reactivate everything. Snurt took in a long, unsteady breath and spoke in a tight voice. And in the subsequent medical report from the maintenance hangar, you wrote that the incident occurred due to an NPI error and was solved by organic grounding. Smoot accidentally knocked a repulsor lead loose during the power cycling operation. And when technician Pakra was helping settle the pod into its berth in the maintenance hangar, it zapped him a bit. As you can see in my report, he was not seriously harmed by the incident, and the medical issue was caused by one of Pakra's grav spanners slipping out of his hand and contacting Smoot's cranium, replied Chief Bill. It slipped from Pakra's hand after technician Smoot was out of the pond, was rushing towards the hangar exit door, flew 12 meters, and struck Smoot in the back of the head, asked Snurt incredulously. Gravitational anomaly, replied Chief Bill. Snurt buried his face into the two of his four hands and sighed. Fine, Chief. Last one. Please enlighten me as to the events of Ambassador. Snurt made a series of clacking sounds, ending with whistling sounds. Personal, yet. Uh, just like it says in the report, Administrator, said Bull. The Ambassador was returning to the station, and his pilot had to unexpectedly dodge a repair pod that lost thrusters. A rapid change, of course, caused a minor stress fracture in the decorative hull plating, said Bull. We offered to fix it for free of charge to help smooth things over, concluded the chief. The security video shows Smoot using a plasma torch to remove what appeared to be a stubborn bolt on the damaged hull panel, said Snurt. He attempted to thermally reconfigure the bolt, replied the chief. It can't be stuck if it is liquid. He set the ship on fire, exclaimed the administrator. Exothermic system response, said the chief. The fuel tanks exploded, screeched the administrator. Kinetic disassembly, said the chief. Don't worry, though, technician Smoot wasn't injured at all, noted Chief Bod. He subjected the ship to a pneumatic departure before it exploded, said Bill. He hit the emergency decompression button on the outer wall panel when he ran from the hangar and blew the ship and 150,000 credits of tools and supplies into space, screamed Snut. Get the marketer word for anatomically unlikely and probably illegal attempted at reproductive act. Out, yelled Administrator Snut, and he threw his pad against the wall. Chief Bull was almost out the door when he turned his head to see Administrator Snut, head down on the desk, sobbing. I'll write that up as a gravitational anomaly resulting in a kinetic disassembly of your pad, 
and have a new one sent up. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Ashtraya the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.